Ye has oh. lit the internet on fire this past week. And I tell you, y'all keep coming to my social media as if I got this man's phone in my pocket. It's the funniest thing. But I don't know where you were if you did not see the litany of posts from Ye on Instagram. He went after Pete Davidson. I had to call up a friend and say, who is Skeet? They said, Skeet is the new Pete. <laughs> then he went after, <laughs> he laid out his feelings for Kim Kardashian and wanted her to get uh, her back. And then also took aim at Kid Cudi. What I thought was interesting, and there were so many posts. Do we have all the posts? We got all the posts. We don't got all. Look, we might have them all, but I can't put them all out. But I do want to share a funny conversation that had with Ye. So he called me. He said, how many times do you post on Hollywood Unlocked? I said, about 50 or 60. He says, so why can't I post 50 or 60 times? I ain't going to lie. It was funny because Wait, what? it was funny because his theory is. If you in the shade room and everybody can create all these conversations about me, why can't I create all the conversations about me? And I just think his level of petty is something that I resonate with. And people don't understand. Like, I know that I'm evolving. Listen, I know that I'm evolving and I've told everybody that I'm sipping this cappuccino, baby. I'm sipping this cappuccino. But once in a while, when I get to the counter, they put a whole full ass cup of tea right there and I sip it real slow. Look, let me get into what happened. Since the Black Future Brunch, or the Future Brunch, Ye has been extremely vocal on all his social media. From demanding apologies from Billie Eilish uh, for Travis Scott, now beefing with his long-term friend Kid Cudi. All of this on top of uh, you know his beef with Pete Davidson, who's now dating his current wife, Kim Kardashian. I think it's important to note that Kim is still legally married to Kanye. Um, now, Ye has now banned Cudi from his upcoming Don to Two album, which is scheduled to release 2 22 since he's friends with Skeet. Okay, now Kanye has shared a handwritten note banning Kid Cudi from his new album. And let me show you that. This is it right here. Um, just so everyone knows, Cudi will not be on Donda because he's friends with you know who. We all speak in Billy language now. <laughs> I mean, look, before we get into the litany of posts, I have to say, people treat him very differently than they treat everybody else, which is what I am the most interested in. I think we, the culture, hold him to a certain level of standard when it comes to how he should be behaving. And his thing is why when my wife or other people have people like Tracy Romulus manipulating the internet with dropping sources and clues and hints and this and that. I'm just taking my own voice and doing it in your face, what they do to me behind the back. So there is that part of it that I understand. I've also seen posts online where people have said that he's the new OJ and that she better get a gun and a restraining order because he's going to be on the way to her house to kill him, which I, I just, I'm, I'm baffled at, but I understand that all of people's opinions are based on proximity. Like how close are you to the person? How close are you to the situation? What are your own instances of domestic violence or harassment or whatever may be perceived, this may be perceived as. So it's been very interesting, but let's break down the, the post. So the Kid Cudi thing, do we care that Kid <laughs> Cudi is not or will be on Donda 2? Hell yeah. Cuddy is musically a genius. And I feel like I'm, as a fan of Kanye and good music overall, I love when Kanye and Cuddy are together. So I'm a little disappointed by that. But, you know, Kanye still makes great music on his own. And I guess we just got to rock with this. But Cuddy can hum on the track and make the track hot. Like, that's how good Cuddy is. Yeah, well, listen, I'm a, I'm a Kid Cuddy fan. I'm a high school guy. Listen, Ye has said it's gang or nothing. Like, at this point, gang to him. You know, if you want to be an actor, be friends with Skeet, then you ain't got no place at my table. And <laughs> I, I, I don't know that that level of pettiness is the wrong thing. People are saying, oh, because you're friendly with Ye now, you're you're switching up your moral compass. Let's be very clear. None of y'all hoes can talk about my moral compass. And I'm going to tell you why. It's a lot of y'all that look like me in positions of power and influence that sit in rooms that I've been trying to get into that didn't open the door and yay did. So I can have respect for what he's done, but also disagree with how he posts, but also not have an opinion on his relationship with his wife and his children. So so I don't know that people understand the seat that I sit in. I don't care if Kid Cudi is on an album or not because I'm not the artist. Uh, I think that if somebody like you, Damage, who knows music a lot more than I do, you clearly understand that it's importance to the culture. I won't lie though. I. It does bother me to see friends fall out because I do know that they've been close for many years. And, you know, all the conversations I have is about, like, how do we all come together? How, how do we all come together? And, uh, Blue, do you think, do you see a future for them rekindling this broken friendship over Billie Eilish? 
<laughs> yeah, Billy Eilish. I will say this. All of us have heard this story where two people meet and they say, oh my God, we're best friends. But when I first met her or I first met him, I thought he was a bitch. We all understand the dynamic where you can see somebody from a distance and you judge them a certain way. And then once you get to know them and you have context for their personality, them acting in the same way doesn't hit you. Like it doesn't upset you because you understand them with context. I don't think anybody is giving Kanye a pass who knows him. It's just that when you're around him, you're like, oh, he's being petty. This is just him trolling like a little Nas X as, as opposed to him being an OJ. So I can understand why people from a distance might think he's this menacing, scary, you know, white Bronco person. I think anybody who's around him would find it hard to swallow that narrative because they've been around him enough to be like, no, this is him being really petty and petty and violent are not the same thing. So I think a lot of folks are, especially the people who write black media, people who write the, the think pieces about Kanye, they're adding a whole lot of really heavy heavy language to something that I don't think the intention is coming from that place. And I just think we have to be really, really, really careful because God forbid something happens. They could say, well, we shot at him because we thought Kanye was a menace and y'all been saying he's a menace all this time. Y'all gotta be real careful when you create villains out of popular black men, because it gives the rest of the world an excuse to dehumanize them in ways that are really dangerous. So I'm really nervous about the OJ comparison. I don't agree with it at all, actually. Now I will say this. I will say that I wish that Ye would put out more, of his creativity and more of what he's doing behind the scenes, like the future brunch when that footage comes out, it's powerful. And you know, I do feel like people need to see that other side so the so the so the landscape is balanced. You know, one thing that I did say to him for sure uh, was, you know, a lot of people. I was I was very uh, I was very concerned about how people were going to take what he was doing because I know the narratives that have been painted about him, and I know how much he wants his narrative to be clear. But like you mm -hmm. said, Blue, the trolling was trolling. You know, and, you know, let me, let me get to Kid Cudi really quick, though. Cudi did respond. This is what he posted. He said, uh, too bad I don't want to be on your album, you fucking dinosaur. Ha, ha, ha. Everyone knows <laughs> I've been the best thing about your album since I met you. I'm going to pray for you, brother. Peace. So he called him a dinosaur. There's that. <laughs> Ouch. Yo, yeah. <laughs> Yo, but you know what? When two friends are beefing, they, they can go at the juggler like that. And I feel like they will rekindle this friendship. They've been friends yeah. for a long time. This will blow over. And we've seen this so many times on social media. We've seen people go back and forth. Jason, when you say uh, Kanye asks you how many times you post and I see his uh, relationship with Justin LeBoy, I think he's learning how to master social media. I think all this is a part of a bigger play, but we're going to see as this rolls out. Well, listen, Cuddy responded on Instagram. Uh, well, Cuddy responded again on Twitter, and this is his tweet. He said, we talked weeks ago about this. You're whack for flipping the script and posting this lie just for a look on the internet. You ain't no friend. Bye. Listen, y'all are friends. Y'all are going to mm -hmm. be cool. But Kanye then uh, responded by posting a photo with Pete Davidson's face and an X on oh. it. Take a look. This is what he said. He said, I just want my friend to have my back. The knife just goes in deeper. Look. Again, it's the trolling and the level of pettiness. Like, you know, Ye's fans, I will tell you, out of everybody that I know, they are on it. When I tell you they are posting and tagging and sending things, but I do want to ask them all, please stop tagging me and everything. I don't, I'm not that involved. Uh, my team, they see everything and they post it. But they go on and on. And um, Ye wanted to get it off his chest uh, about this whole beef with Cutting. And this is what he said. I'm very community oriented. I love my friends. I love my family. The reason I asked Cuddy to at least speak to Skeet, who's Pete Davidson, is because for years, Cuddy has always made it seem like it was me and my family. He not by my side, this bigger than music. You know, again, I think he's, he's, he's saying what he needs to be said, but now it's gotten super weird with another caveat that we didn't see. And that is an allegation <laughs> that Pete Davidson was sleeping with Hillary Clinton. Now, oh my I, God. What? now listen, no. I don't listen. I allegedly, allegedly, no, I can't. Allegedly, okay. I now I will say, I, there's many reactions. Kim, you're with a man who was with Hillary Clinton. Now, we love Hillary Clinton, you know, as, as a senior citizen, but we don't see Hillary Clinton as like one of the girls who's going to be putting on skims anytime soon. But either way, Pete, uh, was, put, Pete was put on. Did you say Hillary Clinton was thick? Oh my God! It's did you? Fact. It's a fact. <laughs> really? It's a factual statement. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not going there. I'm not. I'm not going to start looking <laughs> at Hillary's ass now that you said she's thick. Okay. And them pantsuits. That thing is wagging. What is when the Nancy Reagan throat goat? 
So let me yeah, ask you so okay. okay. so okay. Damn it, you would have sex with Hillary Clinton. Absolutely not. But look, I can call it out when I see it. And them pants suits, she used to be up there on that stage. She was thick. I think, you know, got a little. She got a little. Yo, straight men are fascinating creatures. And now that's how we get canceled. All right. Well, listen, um, he he put Skeet on blast uh, for this relationship with um, with uh, Hillary Clinton. And this is what he posted. Now, this is the picture that you're looking at right now with Machine Gun Kelly. And he said, you will never meet his children because in this picture, they're in their underwear mm. playing around as white people do on the couch, which by the way, I have a problem because white men can play around in their underwear together and still be straight. But us black people or people of color, we gay. I want my straight friends to come over and jump up and down on my couch like that with some popcorn in their underwear. In fact, when Wack 100 posted on his page, I went over there and I said, Basically, me and my friends do this all the time, but dot, 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 and everybody lit me up. They were like, because you're gay. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, wait, I have a question. Have we all just decided to start calling this grown man Skeet? Like, what's, <laughs> is, is that his new name? Because every time you power. say it, my soul dies. <laughs> it's the power of Kanye, baby. Skeet and, and, is his new, wow. And I'm not going to say what Skeet means, but y'all can we figure know. that out. Okay. But the one thing I will tell you, a lot of people are saying are blasting me for saying that I'm finding this comical and that I'm allowing a terrorist and a bully to use my platform. I'm literally posting what he's doing in real time. He posts so many times the other day that when he called and asked if I had seen this post, I had to go back through his Instagram to look at all of the posts. Now, some people are having an opinion that what he's doing with Kim Kardashian is not only gaslighting her, but bullying her and being abusive to her. What he did was post a side text that he had privately with Kim Kardashian on Instagram, and he's been tagging her and everything, so he's making sure that she sees it. But when Kim asked him to stop bullying Pete before someone tries to hurt him, and this was after Kanye said, if you see, if you see Pete screaming at him. What? Okay. Jesus. I'm sorry. No, that's I'm not funny. Sorry. Y'all can cancel me. Y'all can cancel me because ain't no cancel that's culture funny. going on over here. I find it all funny. Okay. I find it all funny that, that, that he's actually, <laughs> he's actually texting Kim who knows he's going to post her text about <laughs> her living boyfriend while they're going through a divorce and custody battle like it's just it's a lot it is it is a lot and i'm getting blasted because i am posting the information okay this is the post take a look she said you are creating a dangerous and scary environment and someone will hurt pete and this will be all of your fault and then he says upon my wife's upon my wife's request please nobody do anything physical to skeet i'm going to handle the situation myself wait it- my wife <laughs> Is this creating an unsafe environment and is he wrong for that? Okay. Objectively speaking, yes, because Kanye does have so much much impact. We can't talk about his impact without also acknowledging that means that he does have a lot of very fanatical fans who will do whatever he says and who do not understand that this might be trolling and might take it too seriously. So when anybody of influence says something on social media, it has the ability to hurt folks. But do I think Pete Davidson is really in danger? No. But I I do understand that it's a slippery slope. And God forbid one overzealous fan takes it too far. So as a woman, I can understand why Kim Kardashian would be like, hey, I need my husband to stop picking on my boyfriend. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot. But okay, you know, you know what? It's a lot. One person that went public today was Sean King, and he posted on his Instagram saying that uh, basically the last person that did this was Trump, and we all saw what happened in D.C. when people scaled the wall and tried to take over Congress. So people are now trying to make the connection between what Ye is doing uh, with oh God. and what uh, Trump did um, in, in D.C. You know, the one thing I will say is that um, – the only thing that I've been told from him directly is that he wants his family back and he's fighting for his family. And this is how he's choosing to fight in front of the whole world. Uh, he did say we running in a burning house and the house has been set on fire repeatedly during the Super Bowl. Ye was trending above the Super Bowl. And uh, and he posted on his Instagram heading to the Super Bowl while trending over the Super Bowl. Um, I think he's finding humor in the text. And I I see both sides of it, though. I do understand why people are saying, hey, mm-hmm. this is not the best use of social media. Please do this privately. This is your family. This is not safe. And then I also understand the other side of him being very clear and consistent that he's going to keep doing this in people's faces, what people do to him <laughs> behind the scenes. So Now, 
I do think this is a war. I, I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't think Kim and her team is doing something more covertly. Mm -hmm. And this is Kanye's response. Doesn't make either parties right. But I think a lot of people are looking at it like it's a one sided um, argument where there are definitely things happening on both sides. Now, I wouldn't handle it the way Kanye was handling it. But honestly, I'm not Kanye and I don't move the culture the way Kanye does. I can't trend over the Super Bowl. And this is honestly hilarious. I hope Pete's going to be OK. But I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't know that there's un other indirect things happening, you know, going against Kanye on the other side. This is a war that we got to just sit back and watch and eat some popcorn. Well, listen, speaking of popcorn, I ate some this morning when I saw that there was a new post with him taking responsibility and apologizing. Take a look. He said, I've learned that using all caps makes people feel like I'm screaming at them. I'm working on my communication. I can benefit from a team of creative professionals, organizers, mobilizers, and community leaders. Thanks, everybody, for supporting me. I know sharing screenshots was jarring and came off as harassing Kim. I take accountability. I'm still learning in real time. I, do, I don't have all the answers. To be a good leader is to be a good listener. So, you've heard from Ye. <laughs> he wrote that? Did he write that? He did. Oh, yeah. That another, was actually really well done. Wow. Another disclaimer. I'm not writing his captions. Can y'all please stop tagging me and saying Jason Lee is over there writing the captions? I am literally watching this in real time like everybody else. 